Hey everybody, welcome back to Entertaining the Thought. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a vlog, and when I vlog I usually talk about anime, so this time is no different. Um, it's been about, uh, about a year, I think, because I think it was, that was when I started watching FMA. Um, it's been about a year since I started watching anime on a regular, bra uh, regular basis, and uh, since then I've seen about uh, 15 to 18 series that I haven't seen before along with some movies. And uh, one of them which I just uh, watched uh, this week actually was uh, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, which is obviously very popular. And uh, the first season is very uh, critically acclaimed and also majorly popular among fans. So, uh, I, I watched season one and I loved it. I loved the I loved uh, the tone that the series has. Uh, the pacing of the broadcast order, not chronological, but the broadcast order, is uh, perfect in my opinion. Uh, I love the music. Uh, the animation is gorgeous. Um, the characters, while they are a bit flat, are very entertaining and very fun, but not deeply written. Uh, the but still very fun to watch. Uh, the the jokes are funny, uh, the dial it's got very well written dialogue, and uh, I love the voice acting in this show. This voice this is some of the best English dub I've ever heard. It's really good. So, um, I was I was just like, wow, I, I like I usually don't like the slice of life high school stuff, but this is really good. I really like this. So I decided, all right, second season, word. So I'm going to watch the second season. And so, you know, I go on my anime list, I update my anime list, and uh, I look at the season two, and I just like, all right, I'll, I'll look at the forum, see, uh, just to see what the topics are. And uh, there was a lot of hate and vitriol and bile about this one arc at the beginning of season two called Endless Eight. And, uh, I was reading all this stuff, and they were just like, oh my god, they were trolling us, and uh, it was such a betrayal to the fans, how could KyoAni do this? And, it, like, all this, this, like, really, like, angry stuff. So I was like, holy crap, what the hell happened? And I was just like, I know nothing about this Endless 8, and I kind of don't want to know right now. I kind of just want to dive into it. All I know is that it's really bad, and that the voice actor for, uh, the seiyuu rather, for uh, Harahi apologized for it, uh, one of the former directors apologized for it, and ratings and DVD sales went down all because of this one arc. And I'm just like, I gotta watch this. Like, I don't want to know anything about this. I just gotta watch it. And so, I watched it. And um, I was, I was, I gotta admit, I was trying to go into it being like, this isn't that bad. Y'all are just, this isn't awful. You want to see awful fucking Crystal Skull or something like that. You know, I wanted, I just wanted to be, I guess I just wanted to be like, eh, this isn't that bad. You guys don't have any right to complain. This is, look, they're giving you new stuff. This is the creators. If you don't like it, fine, but there's no need to expel this much hatred for it. Well, I... I finished The Endless Eight last night, and I actually watched it all in one sitting. And, um, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's, it's not very good. Um, <laughs> uh, I, well, let me, let me first start off by saying, uh, I, I watched The Endless Eight, but I kind of cheated on watching The Endless Eight, because I watched all eight episodes. I didn't skip. I didn't skip anything. I watched all eight. I, um, I did, and so, but the thing is, though, like, I, my computer is right next to my television, so what I did was, I, uh, off the DVD, I played, uh, the Endless Aid arc on my computer while, while I had the TV on mute and I was playing Grand Theft Auto. Now, technically, you can say, oh, you didn't really watch it, this is, you didn't suffer through it, and I'm just like, yeah, I guess so, I didn't really, but... Nevertheless, I think if you, A, look up what The Endless Eight is about and how it's uh, de dealt with, and B, if you've seen The Endless Eight or even parts of The Endless Eight, uh, three or four episodes of The Endless Eight, um, you'll agree that I I didn't really do that much of a disservice to the arc. But, um, yeah, uh, basically really quick, The Endless Eight, the first episode, Endless Eight Part One, basically is Kion is uh 
gets a call from Haruhi, and uh, they all go to the pool, and then she makes a list o- over what they're going to do for the last two weeks of summer, and every single day is packed with some sort of event, like uh, like one day they go to a bond festival, one day they go bug catching, they uh, get part-time jobs, they go stargazing, karaoke, stuff like that. And so, like, uh, throughout this, he's just like, oh, man, Haruhi's wearing me out, you know, typical Haruhi Suzumiya stuff, you know, she's wearing me out, I'm getting annoyed, and uh, Nagato is silent, and me, uh, Mikuru is shy, and Johnny Young Bosch's character is a smug asshole. So it's basically all that standard stuff, but said during the summer. So, um, yeah, that's basically what happens in episode one. And if you can't tell by the uh, title, Endless Aid, then you could probably guess. Um, Endless Eight deals with a time loop in which there's uh, there's a fracture in the space-time continuum and uh, they keep repeating the same two weeks of summer over and over again. It's basically a ground, Groundhog Day situation. So uh, what the point of the arc is, is to try and find out what factor to change in order to make this, uh, in order to make uh, the space-time continuum right again and continue the flow of time at, you know, as nature intended. So... Yeah, that's basically the uh, the plot of Endless Eight. But the what they decided to do with the time loop scenario is to literally do a time loop for eight episodes, and so every single episode of of the Endless Eight is with a few factors changed, essentially beat for beat the same exact episode repeated eight times, and that's what everybody got angry about and trust me i could definitely see why they were angry because that's a lot it's 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 a whole lot it's too much in fact it's it's way too much um i definitely applaud uh the studio and kyo ane for uh taking on something this ambitious because this the story was actually just a 30 page short story they stretched it onto eight episodes and so, like, I can, I can get what they were going for. They were trying to, like, be so repetitive that it drove the viewer to madness. They were testing the audience's patience. They were really, like, trying to hammer this into us. And uh, it, it got it, – they were trying to be annoying, A. Eh? They were trying to be, uh, like, insanity-inducing. They were trying to test our patience. And for all accounts, they succeeded. They succeeded in that, as you could probably tell. But the problem with Endless 8 is that there's just not enough of a drive to find out why this is happening in order to justify going through all this BS. Going through all, uh, going to the Bond Festival again. Going, doing this Endless Summer stuff. You know, this thing makes you almost hate summer vacation. And I think that's the problem is that the, the stakes aren't high enough. Like... Like when the the, the first season, uh, the end of the first season, dealt with something very big, very heavy, and slight spoiler, but not too much. It dealt with the end of the world, and that's big. That's really big. But this one, it, it was just a time loop, and like they could have stayed in that forever. Yes, that's that's a big stake. Yes, but it's not enough in order to really want to find the end to this story. So it just keeps repeating over and over again, and each time, you know, it gets more annoying. Each time, it gets uh, it gets more frustrating. You you start to memorize dialogue really quick. Like I, I was I was spouting off lines like like that exactly in time with them. So you know you get to know this story very well, and. I guess the pro, the, like the like I said, the problem was is that there's not enough of a drive to find out what's going on in order to want to continue being interested in this time loop story, and that and also the fact that eight eight is way too much. In this case, eight is not enough. Eight is way too much. 
Um, this should have been Endless 5 at the most. 4 or 5. I, th I think, like, uh, one episode, the intro, uh, two episodes of repeating, uh, two episodes of repeating, and then maybe one of those episodes they figure out, oh my god, time loop. Uh, fourth episode, it would be the finale, or another repeat, and then 5 would be that. I think 5 would be the good number for, uh, frustrating the fans enough while all, uh, like, getting them to that point that you need them at, and also resolving it well, and getting your point across. But eight was just way too much. Um, at, at, at a point, you just stop caring, but, uh, you, like, I, I, I kept going because I was just like, this is what they intend to do, and I intend to see it through because this is what they, this is what they wanted to do. And I understand that. And so, like, like this actually... Um, this kind of reminded me of Tree of Life because, like, I had I had a lot of the same feelings that I have while watching Tree of Life. Tree of Life, I was very intrigued uh, the first maybe like forty minutes, and then by the end, I just wanted this thing to end, and that is exactly what uh, what happened with Endless Eight. It was in fact the same exact thing with Endless Eight. Endless Eight is the Tree of Life of anime, and uh, so. Yeah, like I appreciate what they're trying to do, and it was very, it was a very bold tactic, very, uh, very brave, very daring. Um, but it just, it, it was just an experiment that failed because they didn't bank on the fact that people's patience, especially when you're doing a weekly show, and one that's as popular and as beloved as this. Um, they didn't bank on the fact that they would be able to try people's patience that much, and that's why ratings dropped, and that's why DVD sales dropped. And so, yeah, The Endless Eight was definitely interesting, and I definitely enjoyed watching it. So, uh, I, I would say about 60% of it. I, I actually enjoyed because I thought it was pretty funny, and I actually really liked the ending. I thought the ending was really funny. I, I knew it was going to be extremely disappointing, but it was still really funny. Um... But the problem was was just that it was too long, um, too too boring, way too repetitive, and just it was just a failed experiment. Now I heard that uh, this was uh, this was these episodes were commissioned because they they didn't want to cut too much out of the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, and they released that as a movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it just came, uh, it just got licensed and came out here uh, last year in 2011, and um, that was. Uh, and they didn't want to cut out too much of that in this season, so this is why they commissioned these eight episodes, which is fine. But if they were going to do eight episodes, they either a should have done something to spice it up each time, like maybe like uh do a, a completely different animation style for some of the episodes like one episode is regular Haruhi Suzumiya animation and then one episode is like um uh like a black and white manga style maybe one episode is like american uh, like americanized one of them is like uh really sketchy kind of like uh I forget the name of the director, but he did Kids Story. Uh, maybe one CG. Like, they could have done a lot uh, to maybe spice it up like that. Another thing they could have done is um, instead of airing the show in broadcast order, you air it the way, uh, in, in chronological order, rather. You uh, mix it up, kind of like what they did with the first season when they aired it, and then, uh, you know, go from there. And that way, you would have been it would have been broken up with uh, the sigh of Haruhi Suzumiya, which I haven't started watching yet, but I am about to. And uh, if they did that, I think people would have been a little more forgiving of it. But by doing this, by making a, a row of eight episodes that were all essentially the same episodes, even though they reanimated them, I have no idea why they did that. That was a waste of money. Um, it... It did. It it drove their point home, but too much, and the, it was to their detriment. And even though I kind of enjoyed watching it, and I enjoyed like the feelings of paranoia, the feelings of insanity, the feelings of frustration, um, it was just completely unnecessary. And uh, I definitely see why people why people stopped watching because that 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 is a lot to deal with. But uh, overall, I still love uh, the first season, and uh, I'm still looking forward to watching The Sigh of Haruhi Suzumiya and The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. 
and uh, I really love the first season. The first season is just, it. I think it might be in my top ten of a- anime. I really, really like it. So, um, yeah, it's just the Endless Eight was just a failed experiment, and uh, it's unfortunate that they tried something new and it didn't work out, but they just went about it the completely wrong way, and there really is no defending it. It It is what it is. And um, if you ever, if you, it, my opinion and most other people's opinion, if you want to get the full experience, I guess you can watch all eight. I mean, you could. I did because I wanted to get the full experience. But really, if you just want to get through the series because you like Hatahi Suzumiya, I would suggest uh, episode one, two, maybe three, and then episode eight. And then, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. One, then two, then seven, then eight. And that'll that, that a that cuts it down by half, and b it um it gives you the proper feeling of what you're supposed to be feeling at that point, and also what uh what uh what the endless eight is all about, while not having to suffer through all that time and energy. And uh, I still love Haruhi. Uh, it's a great show, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's just that um. It was really hard to get through the endless age. I guess that's the point that I'm trying to make. It's it was really hard, and um, yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, can't wait to see uh, Sai of Haruhi Suzumiya and uh, Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. Hopefully, those are those are really good. And um, if you haven't seen Haruhi Suzumiya, check it out. And uh, that's all for right now. <laughs> Oh, dude.